Hello, this is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are looking at two uh, applications from two old prophets. We're in an extended series on application of biblical stories. Now, most of you probably, if you've heard this story, you've heard it around Christmas time. And, um, and that's fine and well, but it has applications for us right now. So we're going to read a story, or actually I'm going to paraphrase a story from Luke, the second chapter, the 21st through the 40th verse. And this story is about when Jesus is presented at the temple. So Jesus is a baby and the Jewish rituals, Jesus of course is Jewish, um, Jewish rituals, rituals um, required that he be presented at the temple. Um, Mary had to go through a process of purification and then um, Jesus had to um, go through a process as well. Uh, there's eight days until circumcision, and then there, like, there's a series of days that has to pass for different ceremonial um, cleansing processes to go through. And we know that um, they, they engaged in this because they were, again, they were Jewish and they followed their traditions of their of their religion and their culture. And so what happens here is when they bring him to the temple, there's two people that they interact with that are very interesting. The first is Simeon. So they, they got Jesus, they bring him to the temple, and the scripture says that the spirit told Simeon that he should go to this to the temple. Now it says that Simeon was filled with the spirit, and so he heard from the Holy Spirit, and then the spirit encouraged him, go to the temple. And so he went to the temple, and when he went to the temple, he began Began to give, um, I mean, to give praise to God because he saw Jesus being there, being um, going through the ceremony or the process of being blessed. And so when he saw Jesus, uh, the, he knew he was the Messiah immediately. He started to prophesy about Jesus's life and he started to praise God. And one of the things that he said is, now I can die. And I want to read that passage. Actually, he says, sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace. As you have promised, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is the light to reveal God's God to the nations and he is the glory of the people of Israel. So he um, starts to pray and prophesy over Jesus and he's like, now I can die. Like he's so he's very old. He's been waiting for the Messiah all this time, believing that he was going to come in his lifetime and he did come. And so he's saying, now, Lord, I can die. Okay. Because I've seen the Messiah and I, you know, blessed the Messiah and prayed over him. And so, and then the next, the next person that we interact, that they interact with is Anna and she's a prophetess and she is, lives at the temple okay and she um, was a widow from a young age it says that she was only married for seven years and then after that she was remained a widow and at the time of this story she's 84 years old so she's older as well and we don't know how old compared to Simeon possibly Simeon is far a far far older than Anna but um, he he and her are both in elderly, right? They're old. And so what happens is she also recognizes that the Messiah is the Messiah and she praises God and she's, you know, prophesies over the baby. Now, here goes the interesting thing. We're going to, if you were to read further into the gospels, you would find that most of the Jews, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees do not receive Jesus as the Messiah. They do not recognize him as the Messiah and they do not think of him as anything more significant. Even in common days, many think that Jesus was just a, pro uh, just a prophet or a good teacher. They don't recognize him as the Messiah that evangelical Christians or Christians believe that he is. So, this is interesting because at this time, the two countercultural positions were the two elders and no one seemed to take what they said into consideration. Now, mind you, they were at a small, probably a small temple, wasn't in front of millions or hundreds or, or thousands of people, definitely not in front of millions because the Jews were dispersed. They weren't together like they had been when they were in the in the wilderness however but in front of these it wasn't a large temple necessarily that they were that this was all happening at but isn't it interesting that these older people immediately know this is the messiah they've been praying and fasting and they already know they're filled with the spirit and they already know like there's something about the time that they spent with the lord that gives them an ability to discern instantaneously it helps them to see who jesus is 
it, immediately. There's no delay. There's no, hmm, I wonder, let's test him. Let's ask him some questions. Let's see if um, what he says about this and what he says about that. No, they know who he is straight off. And we can attribute it to age and wisdom, but we can also attribute it to this. They had the Holy Spirit with them. Both of them have been spending time with God, spending time with the Lord, and the Holy Spirit is referenced as being with them, both of them. And so we see that both of them are filled with the Spirit, and it changes their ability to see what what's going to happen is the rest of Jesus' life, pretty much very few will be able to see what they were able to see in a young child, a baby that n couldn't talk, that couldn't do any of these things. They were able to see that in him. And what the question or application is this, what is it that you might be missing because you haven't been inquiring of the Holy Spirit? right? What is it that you might be missing because you're not relying on the Holy Spirit? It's important that we recognize that the Holy Spirit is our companion. At this time, even the Holy Spirit came upon people. He didn't live and dwell within Anna or Simeon. He was upon them is what the scripture says. And so what what's happening here is they're like a kind of borrowing the Holy Spirit, but you have it. The scripture says that you have the Holy Spirit. It doesn't just come upon you. you it's yours. And so what are you doing um, to make sure that you're hearing and getting everything that he's picking up or putting down. Okay. Are you picking up everything that the Holy Spirit is putting down? That's what I'm trying to say. Are you able to grab, to hold on to these things? Because look at the power of what it does for Simeon and Anna. They know something that their people are not going to know. After Jesus performs miracles, people still doubt it. He raises the dead. People still doubt it. And yet these two old people, these old prophets are able to recognize him as a baby. And they're like, this is who we've been waiting for. This is who we've been looking for. This is the one. And now I can die because I'm so sure that this is what I've lived my whole life waiting for. Anna lived almost her whole life at the temple, praying and fasting. And she's like, this is it. She doesn't say she can die, but Simeon definitely says it. He's like, look, this is it. This is it. This is the end of it. Is it? Are there things in your life that you're like, um, I'm not sure where it is. I'm not sure what, it, what I'm looking for. I'm not sure what I'm waiting for, or I am sure. And I don't, I don't see it and it's not come yet. And maybe it's there appearing or on its way and you might be missing it. Check with the Holy Spirit. Just an application, right? These two old prophets have something that they, that the Sadducees and Pharisees and all of the people who are legalistic and even the people who aren't couldn't seem to get after watching the life of Jesus. They see him as a baby and they get it. Are we missing things that we should be getting? I hope not. I hope that we have an application for this story that is very real and very vital is that, listen, you can overlook some things, even being religious, even being tradition, even practicing something. You can be overlooking some things that God might be trying to point to you. I don't want you to overlook it. God doesn't want you to overlook it. And we're praying for you. We're praying that you would indeed allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you and show you the things that need to be seen and that you wouldn't be afraid or that you wouldn't be um, moved in any other way other than what the Spirit of the Most High God is asking you to be moved in. That that, that, that Spirit would be your guide. The Spirit of God would be your guide. We're praying for you. We hope that you're praying for us. And we will see you tomorrow for another of our devotional series. Until then, be blessed.